Oh, what a bitchy! 2014 ODA 6. And this one is a 2 litre TDI, 85,000 miles on it, and it has an auto magic box. Customer complaint on this one is, well the engine management light is on, and it goes on and goes off, but the main one is when you're driving along, it flags up an error gearbox malfunction. It seems to drive okay, but he's telling me sometimes when that flags up, it cuts power. So engine management lights on, so we should get something in uh, the OBD side of things here. So I have two codes that are the same, of a stored code, pending code, P0717, input, turbine, speed sensor A, circuit, no signal, and let's see if there's any free frame on that. So let's have a look, P0717, it was more or less idling. It was only doing five miles an hour. Engine had just started, 15 seconds. And uh, 81 degrees. So, yeah. We'll go into the early side and uh, we'll do a scan. Full scan, see what we've got. Okay, here we go. TCM, three faults, so we're flagging a gearbox and comfort system there, so we are flagging gearbox faults, so. This might tell us the reason why it's not happy. Trouble codes. So there's that P171 there, transmission Input speed RPM sensor 2, no signal. Uh, all passive. Okay. And what was that? In the, the other one here. Lock and field tank, tank cap. Right, that's not interesting that. Okay, um, I'm going to put VCDS on it here and see if we can get more data out of this. VCDS up and running, auto scan. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, TCU then, um, P171E, uh, sensor for transmission input speed two, uh, no signal, and uh, that occurred at 12 minutes past three there. 
So we can see here, transmission input speed, 1748 uh, res per minute. Output speed, 214 there. Uh, but down the bottom here, we have speed sensor 1, 1713. Speed sensor 2, 0. And, uh, okay. Clutch activation and plausible occurred at the same time. And uh, nothing really telling us there, but that occurred at the same time. And the third fault then, pressure regulation valve, also occurred at the same time, 12 minute past three. So all three occurred at the same time. And they're all different faults, um, but they're all in TCU. So, uh, what have we got here? Oh, that's that fuel tank. Right, okay, so we'll save that and uh, see what we we'll think about this. So just a wee bit of insight of what we're dealing with here. This car hasn't got a gearbox per se. It has a CVT, a continuous variable transmission. So. It hasn't got a gearbox because there's, there's no gears in it. So there's no ratios that change from one cog on the next cog on the next cog, you know. So what it has is a big wheel, a big pulley wheel and a small pulley wheel. And the big pulley wheel can, you know, go up and down in diameter. And this is a steel belt. That's, it's not a chain. It's a steel belt. And that's how it varies. So it doesn't change gear. As you're driving this car along, it, it just keeps going. There's no gear change in it. There's a couple of uh, known problems that I know of anyway with these uh, gearboxes. This one here is uh, a zero AW gearbox in this, and it's regarded as uh, an eight speed. So even though there's no gears in it as such, uh, it is regarded as eight speed because you can you can do you can go in the manual mode and there's eight gears available to you, but even though there isn't any actual gears, so that is the TCU and that is in the back of the gearbox and it's actually in the gearbox. That's an internal filter. There's also an external filter. That's a clutch pack and all that, but not shown here. But uh, on the side here, there's a, a coolant, uh, an oil cooler uh, valve, which basically opens and closes and allows the coolant. Uh, through in the heat exchanger when desired and that command comes from the TCU that is in the gearbox. Now we've had a wee look at a few wirings here and that's the pin out. I'm not really going to show these in detail here but um, this coolant valve that I'm waffling on about it goes directly into the uh, into the, the J217 which is the TCU. So, yeah, so it's commanded directly for that. And what can happen? What can happen uh, is, let me see, here's, here's a button. It leaks coolant. And uh, let me see, any more pictures on this? No. Yeah. So, if you unplug the, the plug for that valve, and there's a, it's wet, the coolant then migrates down the uh, the wiring and onto the multi plug in the transmission control unit at the back of the gearbox. The the plug um, for the TCU that that round pin boy there it does protrude. So it's on the back here there, but it does protrude. There's a hole in the back of it, and. Uh, the external wire and then goes on to it. So, but when we get the car up in the air, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a wee look at that. So one of the first things we need to check, and it's just a simple check, is uh, to see if there's any coolant in, in that plug, uh, you know, that's associated with this um, coolant regulate involved, calls it here. So, however, I don't think that's our problem, based on those fault codes, because normally the plug looks like this, and as a result of that, the faults you'll get are uh, communication problems. So the car doesn't know, you know, to expand that wheel and, you know, go up the gear. So the, the, the symptoms with that sort of problem, uh, you know, the, the, this coolant issue, the symptoms are that, you know, 
you know, maybe doesn't come out of park, you know, the gearbox doesn't function correctly, uh, flashing PRND uh, and all sorts of other issues with this problem. And that can be pretty catastrophic because if the coolant gets into that ECU, it, it, uh, you know, that's the ECU screwed. But nevertheless, I don't believe that's our problem, but it's a quick check, it's dead easy. The other problem is the way this uh, TCU is, is made, uh, it can uh, give problems with outputs. Now, regarding testing this TCU, with the faults that we have, so input speed sensor uh, and output speed sensors and stuff like that, that data is transmitted uh, via the CAN network. So unless you can decode CAN or whatever, you can't really, you're not gonna really be, be able to see it. Because our gearbox is functioning, uh, you know, I'm just making a call here and saying the TCU is faulty. Now, I have reason to say that. I'm not just, I'm not just guessing. So what the crack is with those TCUs in the back of them, uh, there's, you know, the connections can go, go bad and it can, it can give sort of spurious faults, intermittent faults, uh, especially when warm, you know, when it starts to heat up, the connections start to part a wee bit and now and again, it, it just goes crazy. But uh, we'll get her up in the air and get a look at it. Right, here we go. We're under the car, a bit of an under chaise off and uh, that's the back of this transmission. And uh, well, I might call it, might slip and call it a gearbox every now and again, but uh, yeah, you get the point. And over in there is our little coolant valve with pipes going down to the heat exchanger, which is there for cooling the, the transmission oil. So we'll get a wee look at this wee buy here. So this is this uh, coolant regulating valve and see the part number there and it ends in a D so that's that's the most recent one of these the ones that don't end in anything A or B they're the ones that uh, have a habit of leaking and I'll see if I can uh, pull this multi plug off here let you have a look at it let me have a look at it and this is drazzable. And we'll get a wee look at this bio here. Now. Oh, that's like you. So, as I suspected, you know, that, that wasn't going to be a problem because if that was full of coolant with that thing leaking, it's the most recent version of the, the coolant regulating valve. Uh, for the oil cooling and uh, you know there's no water at all in there connections look good yeah. dead on as far as I can see so first thing we need to do is uh, drain the oil out of this thing this is a, a Torx T60 where are you? there you are Torx T60 if you can read that anyway there's, there's variants of this gearbox, this is a 0AW and uh, there's variants of this gearbox have a, a drain and a fill plug with two plugs here. This particular type uh, has only the one, so this is a drain plug and this is where you fill it from as well. So, And uh, that is made of aluminium, it's not steel. So, we'll give it a crack. And uh, there should be a wee taste comes out here, but not that much. It's in pretty good nick, this oil. Now, the owner of this car, this car is 85,000 miles on. And uh, the owner of this car says that he got the dealer to change this transmission oil. Uh, he didn't tell me when, but the recommendation is every 60,000 kilometers, and uh, that equates to 37,000 miles, so say 40,000 miles. So I don't know when he got it done, I'm assuming he got it done at the recommended interval. However, 
Uh, yeah, it's pretty amber looking, but we're taking the uh, transmission control unit into this gearbox, and uh, well, he, it's due a change anyway, so that's, this is what's happening here. Now, he got that done in the dealer, and I can tell you, uh, I can tell you that I know how much he paid for that. He paid £280, because he told me, and I also happen to know that the dealer does not change the filter. This gearbox has an internal filter and an external filter, and uh, the internal filter you have to take the gearbox apart to get out, but the dealer doesn't change any filters at all because it's not in their procedure. So that go for a couple of minutes, and uh, you get the rest of it out. So you have to take the fill pipe out, and it doesn't screw out, so you have to pull it out basically. It's, uh, it's made of rubber, so you just get a pick tool in, and that uh, it falls into the bucket on you. Where is it? So, where are you? That's what came out of there, this thing. So we just caught it with uh, with an edge there, and just give it a wee pull. Doesn't take much to do it. And we just let that drop out for a while. Right, so I've went ahead and took the, uh, that's the, the rear gearbox there, that's the gearbox mount, and uh, that's a load of bolts, and uh, there she blows, TCU, so this is the TCU, and it's just uh, three screws, so I'm going to clean my hands here before I start pawing all of this, there's a the plug, so that's the, uh, you can see that or not. That's the manual selector cable, which is, uh, goes on to here, you know, so. There we go. Uh, right, we'll get this off. Right, we're gonna go handheld here for a wee minute. And uh, I'll just let you see this thing at the back here. So this is what they call the Multitronic unit. The ECU, the last shot you've seen it sitting, you know, covering that. And uh, we can see here, we have a shaft with a, a typical sort of magnetic ring on it there. So, I think that's the output shaft. Anyway, and we'll have another one up in there, if you can see it, up in here. And then we'll have this, this bio here, which is what that cable operates. So if I click that cable, I'm not going to, it'll move into these different positions. So you see these different spuds on it there. So. Basically, this Multitronic unit is what they call it, and the TCU, it has bits going in here that's looking at these different magnetic rings, and it's looking at this, the position of this. So there's magnets on the top of that, I think it is, and then that when that moves about, it knows what position that, that thing there is in. So, and then we'll have electrical connections here, here, and here. And these two boys here are for uh, our pressures. See those two wee holes? They go against the, uh, the pressure sensors in the back of the, the TCU for your oil pressure and your clutch pressure. So it might be worthwhile giving them a wee clean while we're here. So here it is, out. And uh, it's that stay there with the round plug. So here we'll have our speed sensors, position sensors, and uh, so that's the position sensor at it, so it sits in like that. So when that thing turns, you know, it, it can detect what position it's in. These two here are looking at the shafts rotating with the, the typical sort of segmented uh, rings on them. So I think there's two, two sensors in each of these. So we'll just check that, and that's our pressure sensors there, and there's our electrical connectors, and that's our output. Okay, that was it on the laptop screen there, just get you in closer on it. So, let's see, what orientation is that? 
you want to drop this thing? Oh, it's right that way. So, there we go. So, what's that? Output, output speed sensors, G195 and G196. It's a G196 we're getting the fault on. So, the long and the short of it is, this is a known fault here, this output, output speed sensor fault. And it's not, it's not the ring. What, what's going on here is, underneath this, there's a whole load of wee connections, you know? And it's, uh, it's embedded in, in a sort of a pliable sort of mastic. Now, what happens is these wee connections, you know, come away, they go high resistance. And they're made of aluminium, and they're very, very difficult to solder. So one time ages ago, I had a uh, glue plug control module and you know you have to cut it open basically you have to this doesn't come off you have to cut it open and uh, I tried to solve them and it was a disaster because they're so fragile you really need to do it with an ultrasonic soldering iron you know so um, I'm not even going to attempt this and plus I don't want to butcher this so I'm going to send this TCU away for testing and uh, I suspect the problem is the connections in behind this uh, this plastic uh, cover here. The other, the other possibility is there's oil in this. The oil has gonna actually get into this and uh, has uh, has causing sort of mayhem. But uh, that's the the known failure mode for these TCUs. So it's just gonna be sent away, and uh, well, we'll see what happens. And here we are. We have a package full of packaging, and. Uh, Here's our unit back. So let's have a wee look and we'll see what's been happening here. Void if removed and yep, they've had this bit open. So as was suspected on this multitronic unit or hytronic unit as it says here. But well, I'm not too happy with these stickers on it. So this being immersed in oil. I'd say these stickers are going to peel off and maybe get caught in the filter. So I'm going to remove these stickers. But uh, there we go. Hopefully that's it fixed and tested and they do what they said they're going to do. Now, um, people have asked me in the comments before, who do you send your stuff to and all that. I do not promote any companies now on this channel. So, you know, you need to Google that yourself and uh, research that yourself, find that out for yourself, somebody that's local to you or whatever, you know, so there's no promotion here. So don't ask. If you do ask, I'm not going to tell you and I'm not going to tell you how much of this repair cost either because this is not my car. It's a customer's car and uh, that's between me and him. So anywho, another few wee parts we got while we're waiting on that compact is uh, down on the floor there kick that out of the way. So as a gasket, as you can see, these are from Audi. These are from the, the dealer or the, the stealer, as some people call it. There's a part number there if you're interested. And this is what this is this external filter they call it. So it comes with the housing and uh, you know the, the filter's inside it so isn't it just a filter. So I'll let you have a wee look at that. So it's the housing as well and that goes in the top. And down there in the ground, you see two wee O-rings. So those wee two, two wee O-rings, they, uh, they don't come with it. And those are for the coolant pipes that go in there, you know. Or not coolant pipes, but the pipes that come from the, from the, uh, the cooler, the heat exchanger. You know, so they have oil in them, like. So that goes right through there. And there's an in and an out. So that's the bit that Audi, if you get uh, one of these CVT gearboxes uh, serviced in Audi, they do not change that part. And uh, three screws from the top and you just slot her in. That's it. So that's our repair unit back in again. Just the, the three torques there. Hold it in and you just slide it in and uh, remember the seal here 
as well. So five Newton meters plus 90 degrees and those three Torx bolts. And uh, we just have to trust that this is fixed because every time you go to take this out, you have to dump all the oil out of it. And it's quite expensive. Just the rear casing to go on now with our uh, new gasket. And uh, we'll get the, the mount on, which is laying over there. And uh, we can get this car on the deck. So the car's on the deck. Gearbox mount is on. We're handheld now just to show you. Of the, the struck brace off here, make a wee bit of room. And this filter that nobody ever changes, the dealers certainly don't. That's it there. Of the oil pipes off, and they're to the side, you can't see them. But that's the old uh, filter, and it uh, with three screws there that are out. Uh, so I'll just left out, and we'll get a wee look on it. So this is the old filter out of this thing, and uh, I can sort of understand why they don't bother their rear ends changing it because it's an absolute nightmare to change to be honest with you and uh, it's not going to come here she's uh it's like it's like painting your hall through a ladder box <laughs> what the Back in a minute. There we go. Eventually. So, one filter. Spring of a thing in there. Yep. Need to change that, Eddie. Right, we're back onto the car again and uh, we'll take this bung out and we'll probably get an order dump oil out of this because we pulled the filter out. So we'll let that drain. So we must remember to put our, our little fill pipe back in again. A little bit of oil around the, the seal there. Eddie says you're supposed to change that by the way. If uh, the seal isn't good, if it's flattened off or something like that, I would change that. And we'll push it up in. There we go, clicks in. And uh, screw in our little filler adapter here. So on previous versions of this gearbox, like I said at the start of the video, there's there's two bungs, there's a, a drain and a fill. This one here is just the one. So this is a wee bit like a DSG, you just fill it from the bottom. Now, what people, some people do, do do, do do, if they don't have this here, um, they stick about six and a half liters, or they measure what they took out, and they put in they put it in up uh, from the top, you know where the filter goes in. So some guys do that with the ESGs as well. So, uh, but I have the gear, so we're going to fill her from the bottom. Yeah, we'll pump her up and get her filled. Okay, so we we'll have about a proud six and a half liters in that, and uh, we're on the engine. Cycle through the gears and uh, with that goes up to about 35 degrees. And then we'll disconnect our hose and let her overflow. There we go. 35. Right. Didn't get underneath here. I had to lower the car down. Ugh. So, we'll let that go, 
the engine on. Watch out to the trouble. Oh, a couple of minutes later, it's just a dribble. So look at the bungan. So bungan, adapter eight bungan, thirty newton meters on this. Not too much. So here we are on a test drive, and uh, well, so far so good. No faults coming up, and uh, yeah, we'll record a wee bit of live data as well, and we'll have a wee look at it. We'll get back to the garage. Of course, this fix isn't going to be for you if you know the gearbox is noisy, it's vibrations, it's rattly. You know, it's that's a mechanical problem. You know. This is a electrical problem, or it just didn't like the signals. Okay, on that road trip there, we've recorded uh, 19.27 minutes. Uh, I knocked it off uh, before uh, on, the, on the return journey, so um, just so the fans say. So I, I just did it in the hotel at a convenience, so I didn't have to bring the laptop into the car. And uh, we just did a search for anything with the word speed up. So in the transmission control module, that is. So we have the input speed, output speed, and a few other ones, engine speed, vehicle speed. Uh, in K there at the bottom. So we'll scoot it along with a wee scroller on the bottom left. And we can see there, I'm um, just cruising along nicely. And uh, there's up to 100 kilometers an hour, that's 60 miles an hour. But the main thing is that the numbers are all there. You know, so that's kind of what I'm interested in. And uh, we've got the transmission up the temperature, check the temperature when uh, I came back. It was sitting at 90 degrees, so it was well up the temperature. These things, this type of failure, it, t it tends to fail, you know, whenever the thing's warm and been heat soaked. So, you know, the wee connections in the back of the module go sort of hand painting, so. Oh, it must have stopped there. Zero. And uh, we'll scooter on there. I went on to uh, like a motorway. My car opened up somewhere along the lane here. Uh, oh, 100, 100, 100, 120. KPH. Uh, you're allowed to do that on that type of road, whatever, whatever road it was, you know. I can assure you. But anywho, that's it. That's it for this one. It's a fix. Call the customer, tell them the good news. The bad news is he owes me a load of money, but uh, it's, you know that car occupied my ramp for like two weeks there. So, yeah. All right, all the rest. Maybe you get something out of it. Careful. I know you don't need a hand, I'm just saying, be careful. Hello! 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 Yeah, at the end. At the end? I'm gonna back we go.